Say you've got a genius idea and you'd like to patent it. The first thing you need to know is that you can't patent a mere idea. Your idea has to be able to be developed into a tangible product or process. Products are physical things, like a machine, a tool that has one or more moving parts and uses energy. A manufactured item, a product or part that is produced according to design. Or a composition of matter, a newly synthesized chemical compound or molecule. Processes, on the other hand, are means to an end, either a means of doing something new or a new way of doing something old. There are other things you can't patent. You can't patent a mathematical formula or a law of nature. And you can't patent natural phenomenon like electricity or light waves. These all exist independently of human intervention and must be freely available to all humanity for its understanding and betterment. But guess what? You can patent a device that uses electromagnetism or light waves to communicate. Things get a little blurry though when it comes to computer software. The Supreme Court has wrestled with this issue for more than 40 years and still hasn't resolved exactly when software is patentable. Computer algorithms alone can't be patented because they are mathematical formulas. Software may be patentable though if it employs those algorithms to produce a tangible result. But what if you take some ordinary activity people have been doing for centuries and then simply do it through a computer? Uh, no, that won't get you a patent. Now, even if you've got a patent eligible invention, you still have to meet three criteria to get one. Novelty, utility, and non-obviousness. Novelty means that your invention must never have been previously patented, described in a patent application, written about, disclosed to the public, or offered for sale anywhere in the world. It's got to be brand new. But wait, what if you invent a faster than light warp drive? Does the novelty bar mean you can't patent it because it was disclosed on the TV show Star Trek 50 years ago? Actually, you can patent it because the TV show did not describe a warp drive in sufficient detail to enable someone skilled in the science of space propulsion to build it. So take heart, Star Trek fans. The second criteria is utility, which simply means that your invention must function as intended. The patent office used to deny patents to hair regrowing products because they didn't work and therefore lacked utility. But finally, someone invented a composition that really did regrow hair on a bald scalp, and patents have been issued for these products ever since. The final criteria is non-obviousness, whose meaning is, well, not exactly obvious. This is where inventors face their biggest hurdle with patent examiners. Say you invent a wheeled cart to move office supplies more easily between departments. If this is the first such wheeled office cart in history, you can get a patent for it. But if you then decide, hey, why not put those wheels on a chair, you won't get a patent for it. That's because combining two such widely known and available elements would be obvious to anyone skilled in the art of office furniture design. But things are not so obvious when it comes to inventing a camera phone. Even though it's composed of well-known and widely available components, combining the two did satisfy the requirement for non-obviousness because they became more than the sum of their parts and met a large and previously unfilled need in the marketplace. Remember, a patentable invention doesn't have to be a huge revolutionary breakthrough. In fact, the best inventions are often the little things, small advances that save people time, money, or hassle in their everyday lives. So now that you know what's patentable, What's holding you back?